Welcome to Series 7 of the Agility for All YouTube channel. In this series, you will get to hear from the entire team as we talk about the components of our new program designed to engage the right stakeholders at the right time to create programs and products that avoid delays, decrease risk, and deliver value. In this six-part series, we will talk about everything from open spaces to curate ideas, lift off to successfully start Agile teams, and training to support your Agile goals. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy this series. So two in series seven, and today I have with me Kofi Blankens, which you are all familiar with him from our previous series. And new to the team and interviewing is Rosie Smith. So she is going to be asking Kofi and I some powerful questions today about the benefits of open space and why we should even do this crazy unstructured thing that we keep talking about. So I'm going to turn it over to Rosie and then we will see where this conversation goes. Rosie. Okay. Thank you, Indra. Um, I guess my first question is who would open space be for? So I think the important thing with this is to remember it's for anyone. Um, we recommend at least 20 people in the group so that you have the power of the conversation. But the important element is that you want to be solving problems that are high in complexity, that people are very passionate or interested in, even if that means there's conflict, that there is high diversity so that you get the power of those different opinions, and that there is some sense of urgency in the problem you're trying to solve. If you're trying to solve a problem five years away, there's not going to be that urgency for people to jump on and get to it. So as long as you have that complexity and that passion and the diversity, and the need to do it, it can be for anyone. And it can be for organizations, it can be communities, countries, states, and countries is a very good example because in last past September, Kofi led an open space in Ghana. So Kofi, can you talk a little bit about that and some of the whys and the benefits? Yeah, thanks, Indra. I think that's a very, very valid point. And, and it brings me to what we did in, in, in Ghana, which was, um, you know, obviously the first time we, we did that. Um, I, I saw a lot of enthusiasm with, with some of the participants or even all the participants that, that we had and even the feedback that we got from, from that session was, was fantastic. We tried to look at certain uh, challenge areas that we thought obviously was going to lean into to the theme which we had called my ideal Ghana at, at the time. And to, to answer you or to just add to some of the points that um, uh, Rosie, you asked Indra about who's this really for. It's for a, a, a nation or any organization, especially when you are going into, uh, for example, a strategy session. And so if you want to strategize, and so even in our meetings, we're trying to strategize for what an ideal Ghana would look, would look, would look like, right? I think that's that's one, one key element. Another thing, another lesson that I saw was um, the passion and responsibility people were trying to, you know, pick up with and say, look, so long as we are passionate about this, this is a responsibility that we want to take upon ourselves, you know, to get get things done. So I, I think maybe um, as we get along, some of the other things will come up and I'm happy to speak to them as much as possible, um, um, Rosie. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you both. Uh, so I was wondering, uh, kind of segueing into my next question, is there a certain mindset that participants should you know, come to the table with? Yeah, I think one of the, the big things that we teach people is this is expect the unexpected um, and be prepared for that. Um, and we teach people there are principles and laws to an open space. And when you first hear them, you're like, wait a minute, what's happening? But we're going to share them with you anyway. Um, so the first one is whoever comes are the right people. So if you invite 500 people and 30 show up, those must be the right people because they have the passion to jump into the problem you're trying to solve. Whatever happens is the only thing that could have happened. Wherever it's, whenever it starts is the right time. Wherever it happens is the right place. And when it's over, it's over. Now, people are like, well, that means people show up whenever. No, it doesn't mean you show up whenever you want to. It means we still have a time that we're going to start and a time that we hope to finish. But it means that when the ideas start flowing and people get comfortable in that space, that's the right time. The right thing is about to happen. And then the big one, which is so culturally different for most people in a business setting, is 
use your feet, the law of mobility. If it isn't working for you, move. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a talk and the people are not really talking about something that you can contribute and, and find power and passion in, move to something else. Or if you feel like you've given all that you can give to that topic, but there's something else where you might be able to help, move. Or even if you just need a timeout and a mental refresh and you know 10 minutes to be on your own and, and rethink and then rejoin the group, that's okay too. And that is a really difficult concept for mm. people to grab mm. onto. Mm. And Kofi, I think you saw some of that in the open space in Ghana, the, the unexpected um, reactions to those laws and, and principles. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I, again, I like I like that, right? And in Ghana, obviously across everywhere else, you know, change really is not something people are re receptive to, especially when it's happening for the first time. So, Rosa, when you talk about that mindset, right? I think people should come into an open space with an open mind and and expect that anything is is possible. Then, obviously, that agile mindset that rather than we follow a plan, which is some of the principles that if you are you know, embracing agile, you get to know, or you may have known by now, is embrace that agile mindset and say, hey, look, let me respond to change rather than following a plan. So you have this flexibility that that, that comes with you and say, hey, look, uh, to, to address points around the principles, whatever happens, happens, right? I, I don't think people should put the hangman's noose around the neck or try to beat themselves up to say, look, these are our expectations. Um, it, it must come the way we, we want it. No, be open for change, uh, Rosa, yeah. Excellent. So since it's a bit unstructured or the way you described it, there's no <laughs> yeah. agenda, like how would you convince uh, leadership in an organization that open space is the way to go or the right, the right step? Next that step? is a, a really, really, really big leap for some That's people. the question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because most leaders want a script, a, a structured schedule, an agenda. They want to know exactly what's going to come out of the time that they're, especially if they're pulling people off of other work to do this. Um, so they're going to be nervous, especially if it's the first time. But the reality is what we see when you embrace the open space is that the outcomes are way more powerful than if you bring everybody together and say, okay, we're going to have a meeting. And at the end of this meeting, we need to know A, B, and C, and that's it. Because you're coming up with a powerful theme. And remember, the right people are gonna show up. So the people that are interested and empowered, that's also very difficult for leaders, but I insist everybody be there. There was no value to someone being there who doesn't want to be there. They will not contribute anything. And we've, we all know those people. Um, so the very fact that you're asking people to participate to a compelling theme that you feel they would have interest in, and then you are giving them the freedom to be responsible for the outcomes without scripting the outcomes means that you're going to get the right outcomes to the problem rather than the forced or preconceived outcomes you would get if you had a very scripted agenda to solve those problems. And the nature of the space allows people to be more flexible in their thinking. You remove a lot of the hierarchy and the, oh, I don't want to say that because my boss is here kind of mentality because you've opened it up, you've leveled out the hierarchy and you've given people the power to say what needs to be said or move somewhere else if they need to move somewhere else. Kofi, what do you want to add to that? I'm sure I missed something. Yeah, so so I, I, good points, Andrew. Thanks for that, right? I think it, what jumps at me is the creativity that, that happens in an open space, you know, when everybody lets loose, for want of a better word, their guard and, and they just the creative juices are just flowing right you'd be amazed at the number of ideas you know that jump at you you know and we have known from from you know research and so many of the stories of many successful companies that the 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 the, the products as they were that sold them all came out of almost no idea you know everybody was thinking of something really big but you know the one that sold them or made them much much money or a lot more money came out of you know the subtlest or, or or minimum idea so that's that's one i think if you want to convince leaders also i think you should point them or give them a north star to say hey look we've seen companies like you know levi strauss and and you know 
the taxation office in Australia used this before. And, and if you really want to go that way, um, you can also jump jump on, on, on this. I think the last but not the least that I like to add is, is the fun activity and, and kind of playfulness that this can, can bring. But, you know, even though it may look like it is, but we are actually serious. Um, Indra, I don't know whether that captures some of the thoughts that uh, may have jumped at you and, and maybe Rosa, yeah? Yeah, those are good. So bottom line, I think, Rosie, in, in all this conversation is, Give it a try. Yeah. You don't have much to lose. Okay, maybe you lose a day, but if you just give people that flexibility, I think you'll be surprised at what they they can turn out. So this is the second of our videos about open space. Next week, we're jumping to another topic, agile chartering. So you've had this open space, you've come up with these great ideas and solutions. Now what? What do you do with them? So that they don't end up just being a bunch of you know sticky notes on your desk and, and <laughs> so hope you stop laughing at my sticky notes um, anyway, um that is what we're going to jump to next week with the team we're going to talk about that for two weeks and then um we are going to be jumping to more about creating teams and being more agile so this is a super exciting series so rosie kofi thank you both for being here and we hope everybody joins us again next week Thank you for listening to episode two of series seven, where we talked about how open space might benefit your organization. Join us next week when we transition into the topic of starting a new agile team or product using liftoff. And as always, subscribe to the Agility for All YouTube channel to receive notifications of new episodes and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn at agility underscore for underscore all.